There are these mental health drugs. The uh, development of SSRIs happened in a very short period of time, starting in the 1970s. And it's kind of an interesting story. Let me just give you a bit of a backstory as to what has happened. So there's a whole other presentation I could make on this, but just very briefly, psychiatrists, you know, there's a kind of jokes, like they're not real doctors and so on. It's not a real science. And the DSM-5, I think it is now, like they just vote on a whole bunch of stuff. They just make up a bunch of language. There's no blood tests. There's no tests really of any kind to determine. It's just, you know, it's a war of adjectives. And um, one thing that happened in the early 70s, so there's, it's called the Rosenhan experiment. It's also known as the Thud experiment. And it was a psychologist who was questioning the validity of psychiatric diagnosis. So this psychologist named David Rosenhan in 1973 conducted this experiment, which ended up being published in the journal Science. The title was on being sane and insane places, but enough about being a non-leftist on campus. So the study was, it was like a two-part study. So the first had what were referred to as pseudo patients. So these were just mentally healthy people who didn't know mental health issues and so on. And what they did was they reported having auditory hallucinations. And they ended up being admitted to 12 different psychiatric hospitals in five different states throughout the, the U.S. And, you know, they would say, oh, I hear the word thud. And then they would get admitted and they would be diagnosed with psychiatric disorders. And after they were admitted, the pseudo patients acted perfectly normally. They told the staff, they say, well, I feel fine. I don't have any more hallucinations. I feel alert. I'm happy. I'm, I'm coherent. I'm cogent and so on. And what happened? Well, one syllable, they said they heard the word thud. They get admitted. And what? Well, some of them said, oh, I'll be out in a day or two. They were there for months. The hospital staff, the nurses, psychiatrists, psychologists did not detect even one of these pseudo patients. And they believed and wrote and made notes that all of these pseudo patients were mentally ill. And some of them were confined for months. <sighs> now, what's interesting about this, well, they kept taking, because they ended up writing up these, these studies, right? So they took notes on the behavior of the staff and of the other patients, but uh, none of them were identified as imposters. Although what's interesting is many of the other psychiatric patients figured them out. They were able to correctly identify them as fakers. In the first three hospitalizations, out of 118 patients, 35, like almost a third, expressed their belief, their suspicion that the pseudo patients were in fact not crazy. And some of them said, oh, these guys, they're not real. They're researchers, they're journalists, they're doing an investigation of the hospital. And none of the Psychiatrists, psychologists, nurses, orderlies, you name it. None of them figured it out, but almost a third of the patients did. Interesting that the patients are better at diagnosing and figuring out reality. The lunatics have taken over the asylum. Now, all of the pseudo patients had to admit that they were crazy. They had, a they had to take antipsychotic drugs and so on. I mean, Boy, talk of taking a mental bullet for the cause. So when this came out, of course, the psychiatrists were humiliated and upset and angry and so on. And so basically there was this, oh yeah, okay, come on, let's do it again. We'll, we'll figure these people out. And so he said, okay. And what happened was there was a staff at a bunch of, uh, at a psychiatric hospital they finally did identify a large number of patients who were imposters. We've got your number. We figured it out. We figured out who are imposters. But then the guy said, actually, I didn't send any fake patients at all. So the imposters that they found, the pseudo patients they thought they found were actual mentally ill people. So not only could they not detect the fake patients, 
they had a false positive of fake patients for the real patients. Come on. Uh, this is, I mean, this has gone on a bunch of times, right? 1968, Morris Temerlin split 25 psychiatrists. He put them into two groups and he had them listen to an actor who was portraying a character who was just like normal, not mentally crazy, not mentally ill at all. Now, one of these groups of psychiatrists was told that the actor, quote, was a very interesting man because he looked neurotic but was actually quite psychotic. But the other group wasn't told anything. So 60% of the first group diagnosed psychosis. The man's psychotic. And most often they diagnosed schizophrenia. But none of the control group did so. So if they weren't told that he was crazy, they never figured out that he was crazy. But if they were told that he was crazy, even though exactly the same thing was happening or pretty much exactly the same thing was happening for both groups, well, you get the point. 2008, BBC had a science program called Horizon. And they did two episodes called How Mad Are You? So there were 10 subjects and five had previously diagnosed mental health issues and five had no diagnosed mental health issues. And they were watched by three experts in mental health diagnosis and were, the mental health experts were challenged to identify the five who had mental health problems. Just on their behavior. They didn't speak to them. They didn't learn anything about their histories. And the experts correctly diagnosed only two of the 10 patients. They misdiagnosed one patient and incorrectly identified two healthy patients as having mental health problems. So it's not really much of a science to, to put it that way. And what happened was the psychiatrist said, well, man, this is terrible. We we look pretty. We look like voodoo practitioners, and um, well, I guess voodoo practitioners at least would have the benefit of the placebo effect. And this is one of the reasons why psychiatry moved to the medical model and began pumping drugs into people. And the drugs have been around before. I mean, Valium and so on in the '60s, but the focus on these SSRIs really became very strong in the 1970s. Not just, but partly because of some of the exposure stuff that had happened. This goes back to Nellie Bly way back in the day. But anyway, uh, 